Well, hello, church. It's been a while since I've seen you. And of course, I'm not seeing you now. I'm in the empty auditorium. But hopefully you're seeing me and maybe we have even a visitor or two uh, watching and I hope so. These are uh, strange and difficult times we're living in, aren't they? Who would have ever thought at the beginning of this year we would be where we are today? But here we are, uh, dealing with a pandemic that has caused a lot of heartache and sorrow, even death, uh, across the globe. So what I want to talk about is what are we going to do about it? What are we doing about it? And how are, how are you handling uh, this coronavirus? Well, I know Rick has been bringing us a number of good lessons uh, dealing with this, and I know you all appreciate that as much as I do. As one of the elders here, I want to, for my purposes, uh, talk about a text in 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. And if you have your Bible, please follow along. John, the apostle here, says this, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Wonderful text. What's it saying to us? Let's uh, notice a few things. First, we notice that he is talking to us, Christians, or as John says, those who are born of God. You know, what I find interesting here is that John describes us as overcomers. Uh, notice it again. Whatever is born of God overcomes. He used the verb form, overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Do we believe what God says about us? Shouldn't we? I mean, if you're a parent and you tell your uh, child, look, you can do this, you're a winner. Do you want them to believe you? Of course you do. Well, shouldn't we expect that God wants us to believe him when he says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. This is who we are. We're overcomers. He's saying that we have within each of us, we have uh, something, a power that can overcome this world of sin and suffering and heartache. And did you know the Greek word translated overcome means victor? And I find this very interesting. The verb form, N-I-K-A-O, Nikao, is uh, that word and the noun form of that word, Nikeo, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is Nike. Yes, the same word used by the sports wear industry. And it means to conquer, to have victory, to defeat, because the, the pagan Greeks believed that only their gods could be conquerors. Only their gods could be victors, not men. And so Nike was the name that they gave to their, uh, their goddess, which means victory. Well, Jesus actually used the verb form of this word to apply to himself. In John 16, 33, he said, in the world you will have tribulation. Well, we believe that, don't we? We're having it right now. In the world you will have tribulation, trouble. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. There's that word. What was he saying? Well, simply that he has overcome this world of sin, trials, troubles, tribulation, suffering. And uh, 
if he has overcome this world of suffering, don't you suppose he expects us to do the same? Sure. Why should you and I just wear the Nike emblem on our shirts and shoes when in effect, what I hear John saying and Jesus is that we can be the true Nikes of the world. We can be true victors and conquerors of this world of sin. You say, well, Steve, that sounds good, but um, how do we do that? How do we overcome uh, this world of sin and suffering when Jesus, and Jesus himself says that uh, the whole world lies in the sway of the devil and he's the prince of this world, uh, John 14, verse 30. Well, he does say that. But look at our text again, 1 John 5, 4, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Whoever overcomes the world is he who believes, the verb form of the word faith, that Jesus is the Son of God. So John says we overcome this world by our faith. Well, faith obviously is something very critical to us as Christians. The Hebrew writer says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The Hebrew writer says we can't even come to God without faith. We can't please God without faith. We may be intelligent, gifted, well-liked, any number of things. But he says, without faith, we cannot please God. So we are to be a people of faith. And there's only one way to obtain this faith, isn't there? Paul to the Romans in Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the Word of God, when we study the Word of God, we read the Word of God, we receive it, we accept it, uh, we understand it, that is what produces faith in our hearts. Now John says this faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And I really don't know anybody that doesn't in, uh, like the sound of that word, victory. You may not have a athletic bone in your body but I'd say you still like the sound of that word victory especially as it applies to overcoming this world of sin and suffering and death life is a battle isn't it and this Rona virus is a good example of that in fact we're being told this is war and it kind of is isn't it and I think Satan would like nothing more than to discourage you and me and to defeat us with this virus. But listen, we're not going to let him do that. I'm not going to let him do that. Why? Because of faith, my faith in God. Uh, faith is the victory that overcomes this world of sin. Faith is the victory that overcomes this world of temptation. It's the victory that overcomes this world of tri tribulation and trouble and suffering even something as um, dangerous and crazy as this pandemic. Well, how can we be sure of that? Well, again, because faith is critical to the life of a Christian. This is what we are about. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. And so faith is... Uh, what led us to obey the gospel in the first, first place to become a part of the family of God. And faith is what will carry us through any hardship that we face, including uh, this coronavirus. You know, during his ministry on earth, Jesus told us to not worry about life. And we need to believe what he says. He said, don't worry about uh, your life, what you eat, what you drink, what you put on. And then he gave this interesting illustration. He said, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he asked this question, are you not of more value than they? Well, what about it? 
Are we not more valuable than birds? So if we have faith in our Heavenly Father who cares for birds, his lesser creation, should we not have real trusting faith in God who cares about us, his greater creation? Sure. Now, having said that, let me make something very clear. I am not suggesting that we discount this virus, that we simply dismiss it as, oh, it's nothing because it isn't nothing. It is something and it's serious. Jesus made it clear, uh, too, that we're not to tempt the Lord our God. You may remember in uh, Matthew 4 when Jesus was tempted of the devil. And during one of those temptations, he led him up to uh, Jerusalem to the temple and uh, there tempted him by putting him on a pinnacle and saying, now just throw yourself down because uh, there's something in the Bible back there in Deuteronomy that says, God's not going to let you die. He's not going to let you suffer. His angels will capture you. He, they'll catch you. You remember what Jesus said? You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He was saying simply, you don't test God by acting foolish. You don't jump off of a tall building and say, well, I'm a Christian and God's going to catch me. And I know he's not going to let me uh, get hurt. That, that, that's stupid. And in the face of this coronavirus, we don't tempt God. We don't test God by ignoring the dangers. And so uh, we do what we should be doing, washing our hands, um, staying in place uh, when we can, disinfect services, practice social distancing and all of that. Uh, why? Because to do otherwise would be to tempt God, and that's wrong. And by the way, uh, you know, we have several ladies in this congregation, I've learned, who are frontline health care workers. And I think we need to thank them and pray for them. And I'm going to give you their names and suggest that when you have a chance that you text them and just tell them how much you appreciate what they're doing. Chrissy Holbert, Angie Helton, Pam Wright, Morgan Sutton, Andrea McDaniel, Rebecca Caudle, Francis Willingham, and I'm going to add Julie Ogle. I'm a little partial to her because she deals with uh, special needs children. But all of these ladies work with uh, people who are, uh, in many instances, very sick and, and getting tested and that sort of thing, and we need to thank them. Perhaps there are others like Brian and Kevin, of course, who are out meeting the public, and we need to Keep them in prayer as well. But here's the lesson. Let's don't tempt God by living dangerously. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, the Bible also says in Proverbs 22 and verse 3, a prudent man foresees evil. A prudent man, a, a wise man, he foresees evil or danger and hides himself. But the simple man, uh, he's saying the ignorant man really, uh, passes on and is punished. Uh, Proverbs 22 verse 3. Yes, it is a dangerous time and, and so we just have to be smart and protect ourselves from obvious danger. But at the same time, let's be the Christians that God calls us to be and expects us to be and not live in fear. Paul said, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. And that idea of a sound mind suggests to me that we use caution. And also remember this promise, Romans 8, 28, one of my favorites, all things, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. In other words, as long as we live in this world, we're going to be subjected to tribulation, to sickness, to trials, to troubles, to pain, to heartache. But if we have faith in God, real, biblical, 
saving faith in God, then we can know that ultimately he's going to work out all things, all things, good and bad, to our good. And I like that promise, don't you? Truly, this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. If we'll walk by faith, God will help us to be the true Nikes of this world, the true victors, the true conquerors, the overcomers. Jesus overcame this world, and if we're following him, we will overcome it too. Thank you for listening. Um, let me just urge you to stay well, stay safe, stay tuned, and by all means, uh, stay faithful. After all, we are the overcomers. We walk by faith. Thank you. Have a good evening.